And we are live after being live with Cameron Brown. <laughs> we just wrapped up the um, uh, Predator Month podcast. So that, that was a lot of fun. Um, it's just nice to shoot the shit with you uh, afterwards. Like, you know, why not? We, we went on the trip. Maybe we'll do a little recap or something. Yeah, it's always a good time. Uh, so we were supposed to fly back together. Dude, my flight back got so screwed yes. up. So that... Apparently, Air Canada um, gets two thumbs down for me, first off. Uh, <laughs> they, I guess that they have trouble um, getting their flights from Toronto to Pittsburgh. Like, they can't get enough people, and they have weight issues with the plane, and they cancel it a lot. Well, I got stuck with that issue. <laughs> I, you... got to, I got to Toronto at, like, 3 o'clock. No. Yeah, yeah, it was about three o'clock, and uh, I was supposed to land in Pittsburgh at eight, but they rerouted me to Detroit, where I was supposed to catch a flight at eight, and be in Pittsburgh at nine. Well, I didn't land in Detroit until midnight. Holy shit! Yeah, and uh, we land in Detroit, and now mind you, I met this older couple that were like sixty-five. They were going back to Pittsburgh too. They would, had flown from uh, Edmonton. Is that a place in yeah. Canada? Yeah, yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> that's, um, uh, that's Alberta, by the way. It's, it's about midpoint. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, they were in the same boat as me, so we kind of, you know, teamed up. And when we landed, we spoke to Air Canada, and they're like, "All right, well, this is when we landed in Detroit." Um, they said, "We'll just go down to Delta because that." was where our next flight was supposed to be with, or who our next flight was supposed to be with. They said, just get on to Delta. They'll take care of getting you a hotel room and everything and book your next flight. And I'm thinking like, all right, these two airlines must be affiliated, you know, we'll trust them. So we go like 15 minutes, like you got to catch shuttle to get down to Delta Airlines, part of the airport. Holy shit. Okay. Get down there at like one o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah. And they're like, uh, yeah, we're sorry, but uh, Air Canada basically screwed you. They're like, well, you're probably going to have to book a hotel and get Air Canada to reimburse you. And it's like one o'clock. They Our flight was for eight in the morning. Like, we're supposed to find a hotel. You know what I mean? And what do you so, do if you're a fucking kid and you don't have $300 to get right? a sh shitty hotel room in Detroit? Yeah. Yeah, fuck that. Um, but actually, shout out to Delta Airlines because they when he's like, here, I'm gonna do something for you. And I get an email and I'm thinking like it's gonna be like 30% off a hotel room, you know. Mm -hmm. And the dude booked uh us each a room, so like the couple I didn't have to like stay in the same room as that couple. <laughs> uh that would have been like awkward. we're about to get real introduced. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh booked us each uh, room and gave us like this free meal voucher that's um, dope <laughs> so i got to, to the hotel at like two that night and uh had wow, to be back man. up at like five to be back at the airport yeah because you had an rough. early you had an early morning flight too right yeah like it's not like you fucking slept in all day no i flew out of uh flew out of vancouver at 8 a.m yeah, that's what I thought. The previous day. And then Air Canada is supposed to have this policy where if they delay your flight for like four to six hours, they pay you 700 bucks. Or if it's like over yeah. 12 hours, they're supposed to pay you $1,000. And they told me that my claim was no no good. Like that, yeah, that but was, I, I was denied. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to go back at that, though, with, with a yeah. little bit more time with, right. you know, send a few emails or something. They're just hard uh, to, to get a hold of. Their customer <laughs> service sucks. Of course like, they are. They're fucking hemorrhaging money. <laughs> 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 um, you know what? Air Canada is always like, I feel like it's like that front airline sometimes where like you go and sit down. You're like, man, everything's real fucking nice here. You know, and like when you see pictures about it, like when I think of Air Canada flights that I've been on, I've been like, yeah, man, they had the nice screens and, you know, this and that. But then when you think about the experience you had, you're like those motherfuckers. And right? it's like, like, it's like honestly, every, the flight every time. Out, everything was good. Uh, the seats were comfortable. There's plenty of room, you know. It was a pretty good 
deal until like they left me in Detroit for the night. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fuck, where is the airport in Detroit? Is it like in the middle of that shithole or? Because I, <sighs> dude, I couldn't. There tell are you some it was rough areas of Detroit. Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> And they didn't put me up in a nice hotel. I mean, I'm not good. It was a no, decent no, no, yeah. hotel, but it wasn't. <laughs> now, now, let's be clear. The previous night at Columbia put him up in the Fairmont. So he's got a yeah. little bit of a <laughs> fucking gap to build there. I think I'll go get a massage. That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Aaron set the bar pretty high. Yeah, I, I, I was devastated that I couldn't get a massage. I was. I, was, I felt bad, like. That I bailed on you to go get a massage. No, like, I was I... like, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Those that Manhattans a... were worth it. That was a good massage too. <laughs> yeah, because the Fairmont's not like a corner store, you, you know, that's yeah. got a massage parlor next to it. That's like, it, that's a masseuse there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that trip was all around awesome. Yeah, yeah, even even with the little hassle on the way home, like it just made for a good story. So I got home and then I drove. <laughs> I was supposed to pick up Ziggy that day. Yeah, so I drove two hour two hours home from Pittsburgh, and uh, met up with my brother and my parents. Rode down too because like at that point I was running on three hours of sleep. I was like, we had to go another two and a half hours to get the dog, and I was like, there's no way I'm driving. Like somebody's that's gonna <laughs> ruin. That's gonna ruin that whole day, man. Right? You want to be like bushy tailed. Yeah, so the whole fam gathered up. We drove down to get the dog. It was cool. Good, good, good. And everything went well. Yeah, the dog. Well. The dog came home with a kennel cough, which is like bronchitis for dogs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the puppy's just getting over it. But our other dog, our eight-year-old wiener dog. Yeah, he's just get. He's just now getting it. So, Shit. but it runs course, you know. Mm-hmm. Be all right. <laughs> is it? Is it a big deal in an older dog? It it can be. It it affects them differently. It just depends on the dog's immune system, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it could lead to like pneumonia and get worse from there. <laughs> but you just, just just kind of have to monitor it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, what happened when he fucking went to poop on him? Like, <laughs> I I watched that video. So, I like thumbs up and loved that the whole thing. And then at the end, you're like, "Why are you pooping on him? Like, why did I put I love this?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, dude, I'm gonna be so weird." Uh, dude, that was so funny. He didn't actually like he pooped right beside of him. Yeah, like, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. able to get the pup. Yeah, that was so, yeah. Dude, the first two days was a bunch of pooping on each other and humping yeah. each other. And now they've kind of, they just fight and they kind of get along. They get along well, but they, they fight until like <laughs> one of them gets frustrated and goes off. And then, yeah, it's, it, it doesn't end happy. <laughs> yeah. It's like each dog get back to your corners. <laughs> well, there's got to be some sort of like dominance thing going on too, a little bit, right? Like, oh, for sure, dude. Yeah. The, the wiener dog was so jealous when the puppy got here. Like, he did not want another dog in the house. <laughs> no. But they'll love each other in like six months. They're for pretty, sure. Yeah. You're going to have this they'll massive horse and the wiener dog <laughs> like nestled up into it. Right. I feel like it's bigger and bigger and bigger. Like between oh, pictures. Dude, he's even. growing so fast. Like it's yeah. crazy. Like he's already looking down at the wiener dog. Like if when they, they were looking eye to eye or Ziggy was looking up to Doug at first. But yeah, dude, he's growing quick. Yeah. So I took him to the job site with me today. I had to run uh, mud and corner bead down to Wes's job. Yeah. He rode down with me. I tied him up to the trailer outside and he hung out. The problem, I got him one of those like expandable collapsible bowls. Have you seen yeah, those? Or, like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're wicked and, for hiking. Uh, yeah. Labs love water. And like, dude, he went to like lay his face in that water oh, bowl and just... it just collapsed. <laughs> But dude, he does that. Like he'll just take his water bowl and just like tip it all over him. Just, he just likes water, dude. You're gonna I'm have afraid to f- when I get him like out to the river, he's just gonna be d- jumping in it. I did. That's yeah, yeah. Retri- well, it's, it's their nature. He's a lab though, right? Not a golden retriever. He's just right. a golden lab. Yeah, 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 yeah. Red fox or fox red? I forget. Mm-hmm. It's just a strain of the yellow lab. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, you need to get them like a swimming pool. All right. That's what I've been yeah. telling. Yeah. Get a you, little uh, plastic baby pool. 
use half of your fucking water from the <laughs> half, half the water from the trailer for his little yeah. bath. <laughs> Uh, but he did well. He stayed outside, no whining. Like it oh, wasn't yeah, a big deal. Good. Yeah, mm-hmm. good, 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 good. Yeah. That's yeah, dope, long man. enough for me to go in and check everything out. I even taped a room of angles the bazooka while I was in there. <laughs> it was sitting there because what like I said, Wes was frustrated. There was one yeah. room in there that was eight foot. So he did that room and he was touching up the three ways in it. And I saw it sitting there and I was like, I just had to run two belt. <laughs> You're like I'm not showing you up. I'm just running the tube out, and then you just yeah, like, look man, at him in the I face. This you... thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little taste of running it out there at the, the Fresco training day, but that wasn't wasn't enough. I needed my fix, man. <laughs> yeah, honestly, when it's t- when it's taper day, that my fucking tail wags. I like Same. Ru- I like running the boxes. I like running the angle heads, like on the throttle box. I, I really do. Yeah. Man, when it's taper day, it's that's it's the weapon, right? And it did that like it's just makes my that's, whole shit. Uh, I, I I was just like, Wes, man, I'm sorry, I just have to run this. He's like, Man, I honestly wish that you were here running it. <laughs> yeah, because like dude, it is just so smooth when we're all in our positions and everything's running the way it should. Well, but and... it, he'll he'll get there. He just needs has oh, yeah, again man. patience, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's like I'm. This is perfect for him. Like, there's no better way to learn it than to just throw it at you and fucking figure. I mean, I've taught him the basics. Now it's just a matter of him running it and getting better at it. And I mean, you are so fond of it because you're so good at it, right? And right. so he now has to fill those shoes. So that's not fun anymore. That's, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like, yeah. I got to figure it out. But because he has to fill those shoes, he'll be having fun much earlier mm-hmm. than uh, than sure. probably you were timeline wise. I bet. I would yeah. bet. <clears throat> that's good, man. And then, uh, uh, so then all, are the other guys with him just falling into their place? one at one chink up the chain kind of thing like, yeah so nate's been with me i think six months total like he th- did uh he was in the trade school and did some like part-time work for me when he was in high school yeah and then he went back and then came back yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah, yeah. uh he is he wants to be a hanger he's good at hanging like he's a big boy he likes it and I want to get him hanging more board, but oh, yeah. uh, for now he's got it. He's learning how to finish, you know, and he's yeah. getting it. It's just, he gets frustrated easy with it for sure. And if you want to hang, you want to hang, you know, it's, you can't force somebody to be a finisher. Yeah. But you know, the next big house you have, and then he's the fucking superstar. Cause he's hanging the best. It, it'll all kind of fall into place. I maybe, you know, I hope he sticks right. it out to see, because if you're picking, oh, I up think houses, he will. He's he's yeah. enjoying it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And uh, I've got I I saw him today. I told him Monday we're getting back to hanging. I've got a room to hang. It's like twenty sheets maybe, but yeah, we'll hang still, it in a day and finish it. You know, I always still give him a little taste of it. That's what I mean. It was the the accomplishment afterwards, not the amount that you did. Like mm-hmm. I I I don't mean to talk shit, but I mean. If I'm hanging board, I carry two sheets at a time, right? I put up a sheet by myself. I yeah. I, I can do all the things by myself. Um, so if you've got two smaller guys, that's that's what that team has to look like. Yeah. Um, so when I was young, it, I I was like running with board, like oh, I, yeah. you know, doing ceilings off a of fucking two step, where guys are like fucking around and doing all this and that. You get it jammed into the corner, you tack your far ends, you you know, you work your way. Uh-huh. And it's yeah, I I always fucking loved it, but it would have been nice to have that split of of, but you're also going to learn the thing that's going to make you all this money. Uh-huh. And I I would have loved to have somebody um, teach me how to finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like knowing how to finish will make you a better hanger too. Oh yeah, well because you're like, ah, should I fix that? Yeah, you should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, like your your fixing needs to be bombed. Um, when Pat taught us how to do um, cutouts, right? <clears throat> I basically learned cutouts on the wind bracing, like the the top four feet of industrial buildings. So mm-hmm. you've got that like webbing and, and all that shit that's up there. And you would take your left to right measurements and your top down measurements. And then you would just make a grid and cut out the fucking intersections. 
it's it's super fast but because you're doing an inside and an outside number um you're coming from your tight side you can cut it real tight like not not stupid where you're fighting with it but if you give things realistically an eighth it's still just an eighth Mm -hmm. as opposed to if you're you know fucking guessing and cutting big holes and that kind of shit so it's um we also didn't have the road as it so like i was we were doing a lot of that shit with like a fucking saw it was rough. oh boy it was rough yeah so when the roto zip came into play like oh man learning the roto zip yeah. <laughs> oh yeah safety squints engaged yeah <laughs> powder can hurt your eyes <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's nothing like cutting out ceiling boxes yeah you know it's uh and then you wear you wear shades and they're fucking covered in dust like you you almost can't you know You're right yeah it's a little bit tough yeah so you've been hanging more bored kind of like since the podcast started do you enjoy it or is it just kind of something that's got to get done no i enjoy it yeah there's a part of me that enjoys it yeah for sure like like you said it's a satisfying feeling whenever you walk in the house is just studs and you walk out and it's finished like it's not the same when you walk in that's already hung like you you see the house completely different whenever it's bare studs yeah when you get to see the guts right yeah and then you know what's in everything and yeah you're under control when you're the one boarding it because if something's Mm -hmm. a little fucked you can manipulate it or whatever like it's absolutely yeah i i miss it and then i i take a look at what they're charging like if you want to if you want to hang under somebody else it's you're fucking making nothing oh yeah So, so it's you know but when when we take on our own stuff like uh you know i still get pretty good money doing it I'd never do something big though, right? Like um, it, a little back when, I, back when I subbed for that other contractor, mm-hmm. I took on a we were we were kind of slow for finished work, and I'd been hanging a few jobs here and there. I had two guys working for me, and I thought we'll just hang a house, you know, we'll pick up the slack a little bit. And you know, I was making the same rate as I would finishing. And dude, I lost my ass hanging that house. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because like I didn't even have benches at the time. Like I oh, wasn't prepared shit. at all. Like we had hung very few jobs. <laughs> we did it, but uh I didn't make any money on it by the end of it. Like I mean, wow. like, we finished the house after we hung it. So I made money off of that. But that week that we hung it, like, and I'm thinking, like, yeah, we'll hang it in the same amount of time it takes us to finish it. No, it took us twice as long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucking brutal. Right? G- gave the uh the actual hanging crews a chance to get up ahead of us finishers, though. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're like, okay, now you're a month ahead. I never want to do this again. Right. But now I, uh, we're, we've gotten a lot better at it. And we've got uh, collated guns now. So it's, a, it's an absolute game changer. Yeah. 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 And I, uh, I think we talked about this before, but I, I only tack all the boards up. And then with the collated, you come in afterwards and smash all the screws at once. And then like entire rooms are done in a minute. Well, that's, you know? uh, oh, I'll get a sheet. I'll do the cutting, and me and Nate will get the sheet up, and then he just goes with the collated, and I'm off cutting the next sheet. And yeah, you know, Wes is usually off in another room cutting a sheet, and he just, he just hops around with the collated gun, and just keeps it going all day. It's perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> and what's crazy is I didn't. I got that collated gun, and the first sheet that I hung with it was a ceiling sheet. My screws kept popping through, and I didn't take like the bazooka i didn't take the time to yeah. adjust it and learn it uh went back to what i knew and uh i left wes and nate on site with it one day and came back i think i had to go do like a texture patch or something yeah um but i came back and they were using it and i was like holy shit like you, that thing you just hear that mom, 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 mom. <laughs> and you're like wow that noise is a little bit quicker than usual give, give me another clip <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um uh, i like the hilty ones because they're not loose they're, it's a stick right yeah. you, and you, so it it is a lot easier to just like not even look at it and the next one goes in 
Mm-hmm. It's uh, but oh man, that was like you had found treasure. Uh, yeah. you know what I mean? It, because if it's uh, even with longer screws, like I've got the longer attachment for the Hilti as well, so I can do up to two inch. If you try and do two inch with a regular screw gun, it is glacially slow because mm-hmm. you're going to, you're going to have that tippy shit going on. Right. Uh, that's all still in the housing of the Hilti one. It just plunges into itself. Well, it's the same as the DeWalt. Um, oh yeah. Like even the stuff that took a long time is the same time and it's fast. Hey, how I- much work have you done with a uh, resilient channel? um yeah quite a bit but not uh so resilient channel when we were doing it was a soundproofing thing mm-hmm. um people use it now for if you've got a bunch of joists that are a little fucked up you'll run the resilient and that little bit of flex will even out your ceiling yeah um so so that 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 aspect of it i never got to um we just had to frame everything perfect uh there was no uh outside of that right but i mm-hmm. i um was doing all commercial by then um but it, it's it's good it's kind of a pain in the ass like i feel like it moves around um see i just uh i went and looked at a job and they're using it for fireproofing reasons yeah so okay so like another hour of fireproofing so and i've never installed it it seems like it would be simple do you just screw oh, it yeah. nail it yeah, so you run you run against your joists, not with right, and uh, and you just hit it there's in the little ovals, and then it is it it looks like you did you did it wrong. What do you attach it with? I mean, does uh, the... just fucking drywall screws. Drywall screws. That's what I was wondering like, yeah. if I could just use the uh, my coal lady gun and just snap it up there. Yeah, totally. Um, you get a chalk line, like set a laser, and then r- just run a chalk line. Um, mm-hmm. you know, snap a whole room and then go. I'd, or maybe there's a faster way to do that, but that that's how I always... I feel like it. you could just do it every 16. Like, it was just holding the drywall up, you know? I feel like it wouldn't oh. have to be perfect. It, does, it, it doesn't, and it's quite wide. Like, it, it's, I think that, yeah, it doesn't have to be I, perfect. I did a little bit of research on it, and I feel like you they, you stay three at, three inches from the edge or something. Um. Yeah, I guess. The only thing that I would say to that is if, if it's just going to hang there, if that would be better or worse. Like if you've got a joist that ends, you know, an inch away and you're going to mm-hmm. go three inches back. So you're 15 off the last support piece. Does that make sense? Like if you, if all your joists are running this way and at the end of the wall, with the way that it lands, like your your last choice is within three inches. I think I would still hit it to yeah. have to have fifteen inches sitting there. It'd kind of be, I don't know. No, yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd put another one up in there. Yeah, but I guess that I'm wondering why they're doing that. Three inches. I forget where I read it. I feel like it was in. Um, I've got the drywall handbook. Actually, yeah, I want nice. to uh, shout out to Drywall Shorty. Um, she did a giveaway with USG and I got oh, the handbook sick. on drywall. And when I got it, it was kind of one of those things that I was like, Psh, I'll never open this. And and did this past week, I've been like reading it each night before bed. I learned, uh, cause there's, I'm bidding this job. It's a sorority house that caught on fire and they're redoing it. Okay. Um, it's like 600 sheets of drywall. There has to be a resilient channel installed. There's two stairway walls that are like brick. Mm-hmm. And there's no way of framing because of the stairway, like the width of the stairway. So they need plastered. Um, or you can laminate. It, it, they don't want that though? No, he wants plaster. He wants diamond mesh. Uh, oh, with the moisture oh, okay. barrier behind it. And, They're uh, going all out. Struck a light first coat, actually first two coats, and they said I could use uh, easy sand or Durabond for skim. But yeah, it's a like complicated job. Like mm-hmm. you're talking three floors. I'm not even. It's all five eighths board. Um, I'm not even sure that I can boom up to the third floor. <laughs> that, that's gonna be rough. Yeah, it's it's a big job. So what is that? Sure. Two two hundred sheets probably to the top. 
was a full day. I think 130 in the third floor. So if I could boom to the second floor and walk them up to the third, like 130 is not that bad. But I'd rather it be zero. <laughs> I'm going I'm to remind you that you said that. <laughs> yeah, when I'm carrying <laughs> five eights upstairs. Oh, seven. Yeah, that job's in. That's, <laughs> and it's all level five finish. Um, I showed him fresco wow. because I thought if it's level five, I could just fresco it, spray the mud, be done. He well, wouldn't could, have to have a painter come in. You could paint he, your rooms. Right. And uh, he liked the fresco. So we'll see. Dope. Yeah. That fresco ceiling that I'm doing right now, I am so excited to see it sealed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I had the woman's... Okay, so I went into that job. A buddy of mine did the roof. Um, they tore all the shingles off, put their paper down, their plastic paper, got hit with a rainstorm, and Ooh. caused ceiling damage. Um, Ten-foot ceiling. Like, dude, the trim work. In that beautiful. room, like in the oh, it's incredible. Um, like a ter terrible job to screw up on. Like, <laughs> and I'd made sure I told him that, like, prior to going in, yeah. But uh, originally she wanted it retextured, which I don't know if you noticed the texture, it was like a stomp, and then they twisted it. It was real, yeah. it was awful, it was odd, in my opinion. But originally she wanted it retextured and painted the same. And I hate painting. Like Cause when you sucks. paint, it sucks. And dude, I it, it's a mess. Like you're yeah. always getting like splatter off of your roller. Um, and yeah, I didn't want to get that on like that. That house is like a million dollar house. Like I do not want to screw anything up in there. Yeah. So I pitched her the fresco harmony, and she loved it. Like she wanted the bathroom ceiling done with the swirl. And uh, now is that the coppery green? Is yeah. that in the bathroom? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So I ahead. sold her. I sold her on the uh, the green with the copper bleeding through it, and then like as I was in there putting the base coat on, I was noticing all the trim work in there had uh, like a bronze gold accent to it, and I had bronze. So I went home and I made a sample board with the bronze swirl, and she loved it. Yeah. Did did the bathroom ceiling today? Second coat. I still got to seal it. Um, and she called me that I. I was supposed to do the master bedroom with a green and bronze swirl. Okay. And it would have been beautiful, dude. And she called me this afternoon. She's like, hey, I love the bathroom, but I'm just afraid it's going to be too busy in the bedroom. And yeah, uh, it could, could be. Could be. So she was, we're still going to do the, uh, a little green. heartbreaking. I know. Oh, dude, I was so excited about it. But still, I had to do the bathroom ceiling, and it turned out awesome. Like, yeah, that like she, big big canvas, right? Like a big master mm -hmm. bedroom would have been a nice big ceiling. That would have been beautiful. Bummer. Yeah, it's still gonna look good though. Oh yeah, yeah. With the the sage green, you know. What kind of uh, sealer are you using in the bathroom? So I talked to Nick about it just earlier. I was going to use warm warm silver because I have like a gallon of it. Oh. And he told me to take some of the copper and mix it in with some gloss and seal it with Ooh. that. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> you are right. So what would you do? You add like a tablespoon and then whip it all up and see. And then you add a little more. And he said he gave me uh, 25 cc's is what he said. Oh, okay. To one quart. So That's bang on. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's just going to be suspended in the sealer. Yeah. So it, it should be just the same as the gold and everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. And you're matching the color. I really like that. Dude, that was luck. Like the ceiling before was that mint green. Yeah. And uh, I just happened to have like a while back, I ordered probably like 30 bottles of fresco remember when i had that big package coming <laughs> yeah um, Damn's so big I've package. Had, yeah <laughs> <laughs> boasting about my big package again <laughs> um i have like 15 buckets of fresco sitting in my garage that like are getting ready to mold yeah so like i'm trying to like get some walls done asap yeah and uh 
just so happened to have those two colors like that sage green matched the prior ceiling paint and like it just worked out great <clears throat> i remember having a conversation with foz about this where i was like at some point you're going to be sitting around with like 10 fucking buckets and it's going to be close enough to one of them i love that that's a real thing oh where, yeah and it, what do you think it's enough for what, what you, you do like is it enough volume for what you're doing oh absolutely i yeah, was a little cool. bit worried that one bucket wasn't going to do that master bedroom ceiling Mm-hmm. But I first coated it, and I did, I pre-coated it with Durabond because the texture was so heavy, totally. and I had cracks to fix, too. So I just skim-coated it all. Or no, I just used regular mud. I didn't even use Durabond. Okay. So I skim-coated it all with, uh, I I had a bucket of all-purpose up there because I was taping with it, and mm-hmm. I, I decided I wasn't carrying it back downstairs, so I just burned it up on the ceiling. Oh, yeah. And I ran out halfway through, and I used plus three. <laughs> to skim the rest of it but uh (laughs) yeah it only took me half a bucket to cover that big ceiling base coat and tomorrow i'll second coat it and i won't even use a quarter of it you know yeah that's even oh no it won't be i was gonna say that's even swirling mud because when i do my swirls like i gotta dispose of some mud because once you get so much mud mixed in there (laughs) it, it changes the base color right so yeah, I found that right away. And then the more you play with it while it's on the wall, the, the paint seems to just disappear. Yep, you want to get it smeared in one yeah. coat. And if you leave that bra- the metallic paint like on the edge of your trial, that's where you want it because you want to press it into your base coat. Right. You, you want it to drag across the wall. Okay. And then... If you can get it spread decent, like it doesn't have to be perfect, just let it sit for a second and work a different area of the wall and then come back in another couple strokes and work that first motion. Okay. You you can really manipulate that and get it to lay. Because if you just wipe it and wipe it right back off, it tends to just smear. It doesn't like lay and flash as well. Like it almost sets up. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I've been trying to get out to see a star. Man, I've been nothing but fucking sick since we got home. Dude, that jet lag hit me hard. And yeah. uh, I still haven't unpacked. Like, I haven't gone through okay. any of the content. I started yeah. putting some content together one day. But with having the puppy, dude, I haven't been sleeping good. Like, that's, been, that's like having a kid, dude. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't have a kid, so I, I shouldn't say that. It's okay. Um, it's okay dude, to say those it's, things. It's a job. <laughs> yeah. It, it is an enormous responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Like I take my <laughs> eyes off him for two seconds. He's chewing something up. Or, yeah. dude, he jumped out of my truck window the, the other morning. Like I had to go from my building over to my dad's garage to get something. And I was like, all right, put one dog in the truck, turn around to get the other dog. And Ziggy's like laying on the concrete whining. I was like, holy shit, dude. I just turned around for like two seconds. <laughs> I've decided we're doing something different. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got uh four minutes here. You uh you coming back again? Yeah, you want to do another one? Yeah, why not? Sure. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> 